Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Make It, Own It, Work It. Today we are doing painted rocks. This is um, our craft that was really popular when we could have in-person stuff. Hopefully we'll be able to have in-person stuff at some point this year and we will do this project again when we can do it in person. Um, but we're just going to talk to you about like different techniques, different ways to paint your rocks and um, different things you can do with them once they are painted. So this is an example that we have um, of a mandala rock that I painted. Um, we're going to be showing you how to seal this um, specifically uh, in the video as well as other painting techniques. Um, I'm going to adjust the camera so you can see our hands. Yes. hands well my hands will be there momentarily <laughs> perfect so this is a, a craft that you don't need a whole lot of supplies for you do need uh, river rocks river rocks tend to be better um, in my experience when you're talking about rock painting because they've already been worn smooth you have a nice smooth surface to work with and um, they also paint a little bit better I've used like rocks I found outside just somewhere else and they seem to just sort of like suck in the paint and so you have to use a lot of paint to get the same coverage on other kinds of rocks in my experience so a river rock with a smooth surface is your best bet for um, this kind of painting so I'm going to be just life painting a rock while we're going here here's my palette as you can see there's not very much paint this is like maybe three or four drops of each color of paint I want to use so you don't need an excessive amount. And I've got quite a small, precise brush. It's kind of a flat tip. I may move to an even smaller brush if I want finer detail, but it's not a big canvas. So I'm gonna be attempting a flower. <laughs> so wish me luck. I've got my brush, my paints, some water to clean my brush, and I've also got paper towels off camera. Yes. And I'm going to be borrowing from Julie's palette um, as well, um, just to show you some of the different techniques that you can use. So on this one, um, which I'm going to show you again so you can see it a little bit better, there's lots of dots. This one I did mostly with dots. And so you can do that a variety of ways. You can do it with um, a sharpened pencil tip. You can do it with the back end of a paintbrush. You can see that paintbrushes have, some paintbrushes have a really small thin tip so that you can uh, do that. We happen to have this handy dandy little tool um, right here. Um, it's difficult, a little difficult to show you, um, but they basically, it's a stick with two different size dots uh, on the end. And so what you can do with this kind of tool, what you can do with the tip of a sharpened pencil or the back end of a brush is you're just going to sort of lightly dip into the paint and then when you make your you can make a dot on your rock so you can see that makes a lovely little dot and it's two different sizes on this particular thing but if you want to make it a little bit bigger you can just push out the edges a little bit so you can make your dot a little bit bigger. Um, I <laughs> can I borrow your paper towel? Of course. See, this is this is live. All right. So with these things, you don't really need to rinse anything because the color doesn't really stick on the metal tip. Um, you can just wipe it off and then move on to a different color. And so you're just gonna again dip your brush lightly in the color that you'd like, and then you can make a dot where you will. And you can make multiple dots with the same technique and the same color. And so if you're doing like the mandala style, this is typically what you do. You sort of start in your center and work your way outward. So. I have this cute little pattern right here. You can alternate colors. You can um, sort of build it any pattern that you like. I'm 
find the circular patterns really satisfying. I mean, obviously that's what I did here, this really circular pattern. Um, but you can do whatever you'd like. It doesn't have to be circular. It doesn't actually have to be a pattern. You can just throw random dots all over it. Um, I've done something similar to that where I painted a rock that had a tree on it and I did the dot technique with, um, with the tree and I just had a bunch of like random colors in there. So I just wanted to show you that technique. And another technique, oh, and I, I painted these rocks black before we started just because I like to start with um, uh, a plain base. Um, you can tell that I painted this rock black to start with as well. Um, but yeah, I just like to start with um, the black base because I think it makes the colors pop more. But if you already have a dark rock or you think the rock is pretty enough as it is, you don't have to do that. That's just a stylistic choice. Um, and you can do whatever you want. Like it, that's the best thing about all of the crafts that we do. It's not uh, prescriptivist. You can do whatever you want to make it your own. Yeah, this one I left the natural texture of the rock. It's um, already a dark river rock, but I really like the different facets on it. Um, I'm probably gonna go over my color twice with this, uh, just to make it pop more, to give it a richer color. Um, but I do have to let the layers dry before I try to add another layer. So uh, patience is key. I'm doing kind of a mandala style. Um, I'll be adding another layer of petals on the outside and continuing till I reach the edges. So I'll just be over here. Like I picked a small brush because I'm just doing light little taps to make my petals. Uh, as I say, it's a very small canvas, so it's just a bunch of light little tapping to get the shape I want. Yeah. And if rock painting isn't for you, but you wanna participate in building a beautiful flower, you can come on down to the library and pick up uh, a paper petal because we're doing um, a gratitude uh, community uh, mural sort of um, so we're gonna we not we're going to we do have uh, something in the window it's a flower people write down something that they enjoy or something that they're grateful for and then we we put up the petal in the window and the more people who participate the bigger and more beautiful this flower gets so you can always come down to the library and do that um, this technique I'm going to show you with this um, is a stenciling technique. So I have um, a piece of lace and I've uh, taped one side to the back of the rock because you want it to be able to stay really stiff. And then I'm going to show you how to transfer that onto your rock. So let me just tape this other side down so that it doesn't move. And then I'll show you how to do that as well. This is a nice meditative craft. Um, yes. This last year has been kind of insane. <laughs> totally unprecedented. None of us know how to navigate this. So it's kind of nice to do something that gives us a little time to reflect on changes, uh, being hopeful now that we have a vaccine, um, or just to not think at all because there have been a lot of big decisions made in the last year. So this is just a nice way to clear the mind if that's what you desire. All right, so now we have the lace taped onto the rock. I think I have a nice little array of it. Um, when you're doing something with a stenciling, what you want to do is you want to have like a spongy sort of brush. You could use a regular brush, um, but it's a little more difficult. The brush pieces get under the, um, uh, they get under the, the pattern. Um, and so you don't get something as smooth. With a sponge brush, you can bounce it and control. The, the paint is less likely to slip underneath your, your pattern. So um, I'm once again going to borrow Julie's palette. Um, and I like this particular bronzy color. So I'm just going to dip it into the bronzy color here and sort of bounce it uh next to it to sort of like take off the excess and then i'm just going to bounce that onto my pattern okay. 
And this is a slower process because you want to build up the, the color a little slower. You want to make sure that you're filling it in. Um, if you're really specific about like wanting that sharp lines, um, you can be careful about not going over the edges of the lace. I don't mind that so much. I kind of like a little bit of a imperfection. I like a little bit of imperfection in what I do. I don't want it to look like a machine did it. Um, I like it looking like it's something that I made and I'm not perfect at all. So um, I'm just going back in and uh, bouncing the color onto your pattern. And I keep going over the sections that I already did because I'm uh, picking up color there as well and just making sure that it's like really thoroughly um, covered in, in the paint. So bounce, 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 bounce. This is definitely a project that has a lot of personality. Yes, that's a great way to put it. Like you can definitely imbue every sort of project you do with your own personality. And this is a great way to do that. Like even with something like if, if everyone did the same technique with the lace, like it would all come out differently and you could see people's personality in it, whether they were very much within the lines or outside of the lines, what colors they picked, all of that. Um, it's all shows your personality and um, who you are a little bit. All right, and I'm gonna peel off the tape so that I can show you what this looks like now. Ooh, big reveal, so exciting. Remember, this is live. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is very much live. All right, and so this is what, what I got from mine. So there was some bleeding, but there is texture. I feel like the texture now almost looks like a snaky pattern. Um, it oddly kind of looks like one of those like global maps that have been spread flat. I think that's just a, wow, that's really fun. I actually really, really like the way that this turned out. I mean, even though it wasn't what I expected it to. Um, but it, I still really, really like it. I'm definitely gonna seal it once it dries and I'm gonna hold on to that. That looks really cool to me. <laughs> I'm so happy with that. I actually really like the antique kind of vibe it has. Oh yeah, with the coppery colors. That, that looks oh, really cool yeah, too. Yeah, on the dark rock, that copper really pops. Yeah. I actually just took some of the copper for my own rock because I'm like, that's really pretty. I need some copper on my rock. Yeah. So, <laughs> and this is what it looks like when it's all done. Oh, let me hold it in front of my shirt so you can see the pattern, <laughs> the darkness. Okay. So whether you're free handing your rock like Miss Julie is, or you do um, a pattern or you do a mandala or whatever it is that you're doing, if you want to say what you're doing at the end, I would recommend sealing it um, because um, this is still susceptible to like being damaged in water and whatnot and you just want to go ahead and protect it. So what we're going to do um, is we're using dishwasher safe glossy Mod Podge. Hashtag not sponsored. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're just going to use some of this. It's dishwasher safe, so it should be, um, it, it will be sort of waterproof when it's done and it will protect what you have. Um, they do have different finishes. I like things shiny. Um, I feel like it's probably the magpie in me, but I, um, I do like stuff shiny. Um, so I chose the gloss, but if you like things a little more matte, then you can definitely choose that kind. So you're just going to dip your brush in the Mod Podge and you're just going to lightly brush over it. Um, the wonderful thing about Mod Podge is that it goes on white, but it will dry clear. Um, so 
I, I like that so that I can see for sure where I've uh, gone over uh, the rock already. And I can make sure that every single bit of it is covered um, because I want to make sure that the whole rock is protected and not just um, a little bit. And then you're going to, once you've covered your whole rock, this is a small canvas, so it doesn't take a whole lot of time. Um, once your whole rock is covered, then you're going to leave it to dry. Um, a lot of people who use Mod Podge recommend using a spongy brush for this kind of thing as well, because the spongy brushes doesn't, does not leave um, stroke marks. And so I don't think it's going to show up on camera too much. But when you use a brush, you will see like brush strokes in the Mod Podge and it will save a little bit like that. It will, when it dries, you'll still be able to see them. I like it. Um, so I like that. So I'm not bothered by that at all. Um, and so I will go ahead and just leave it the way it is. Though I did notice that there is a little brush hair that is in my Mod Podge, so I'm gonna try and get that out really quick. I'm gonna have to get my fingers dirty. Ah. See, and we are live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually excited with how this is turning out. I'll sh hold up the rock and show you my progress so far. See if I can get an angle where the light's not. <laughs> obstructing the view but um i'm just doing layer upon layer of petals um radiating out um, i think i'll definitely want to seal this afterwards um this might make a good paperweight um this might be a nice decoration for the garden although i think i would like to seal this and send it to my sister back home these colors remind me of her so i think it'll make a nice gift so you can see now that this is like a lot shinier than it was before and that's not just because it's wet, um, it'll be because of the qualities of the Mod Podge. Um, it will stay glossy now that it's dry. Um, and then like Julie said, like putting it in the garden or using it as a paperweight. I know here at the library um, we keep our, the past times that we've done projects like this, we've kept ours and we use them as paperweights or um, otherwise decorations. Um, one of the things that I was reading about painted rocks in a garden is that if you um, are growing strawberries and you put rocks in the strawberry bed that are painted bright red like strawberries, um, the birds will leave the real strawberries alone because they'll have tried to get the stone strawberries and they did not like that at all. Um, but it's also like just a fun, beautiful thing to hide around your garden. Um, this one, uh, we have super glued um, a magnet to, and I, I put that on my locker here at work um, because I think it's really, really pretty and it's also an easy way to go, oh no, that mandala locker, that's Giselle's locker. So um, that's something you can do with it. Um, you can put a magnet on it. Um, or use it as other decor or a paperweight. There's lots of options to use this. Um, we don't like to like just have crafts that are only pretty. We like to have them be functional as well. So um, whatever function you want to assign to your rock, you can, or you could just make a pet rock. I hear pet rocks are great. They're very good at um, staying, but they're not that great at fetch. Um, so just keep <laughs> that in mind if you decide to go with a pet rock. <laughs> you don't have to potty train them either, which is right. kind of a big plus. Um, these might be fun as something to um, to make these and then hide them around and play a game with friends, like find the painted rock and then hide it somewhere else so I can find it. So basically a little game of hide and seek, great socially distanced activity, pretty prizes. <laughs> yeah, lovely, lovely rocks. Um, so... Julie is just about done with her rock or? I was gonna add one more layer so I can get all the way to the edge, but yeah, it's mostly done. 
Let's see. And it's the lovely, super lovely color. She's got like this metallic silver and blue and purple and gold. It's all super lovely colors. And again, you guys can do whatever you'd like with this. Um, Mod Podge is available anywhere um, that craft supplies are sold. We're just using um, simple acrylic paint too. Um, so that's something that you can pick up at local craft supply stores as well. Um, and so I know that uh, the local stores have them if you don't happen to have them lying around. Um, but yes, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in uh, the comment section below. We'll share this later. Let us know if you have any projects that you'd like us to do in the future. And if you do this project yourself, please share uh, your photos with us, like and share the video if you wanna see more. And we will see you next time. Have a good week. Bye.